Amen. Why do they do that? The one thing that comes to mind is they want attention. Sure. I think one of the greatest things that's happened in our, one of the, the worst things that's happened in our society is that parents have paid no attention to their children. And they're going to get attention from somebody. They demand attention. Why are those, why is the guy calling up Mark? Because Mark listens to what he has to say. I wonder if his parents ever listened to what he had to say. I wonder if his dad ever sat down and just talked to him. Amen. I wonder if he just sat in front of the TV and was babysat by that. They gave him a no tender game when he got of old enough, and then a Wii, and then a, then the other games, and that's all he ever did is sat in front of the games. And there's no fellowship with his father and the son. Right. So what's happening? We're not conveying. The father's not conveying to the son his experience. His history. That's why the history books are all messed up. And the Jewish, before all this, you know how they conveyed? They sat down and told their children the stories. And their, and their children, they told them over and over again. Amen. And guess what? The next generation, they told them over and over again. Amen. We're not seeing that today. Why? Because the devil is talking to our children instead of us, right? I thank God that I worked with my daddy at the age of 12. I was in the woods with him. We were cutting rails and posts. He taught me how to split rails, split posts. He taught me how to swing a go devil or a splitting wall. You call we call it a go devil. Amen. He taught me that Charlie, when you hit that, you gotta grunt. If you don't grunt, you're not hitting hard enough. Amen. Amen. He, that, he knows my daddy. Amen. Hey, he taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to work. He taught me the value. We would cut wood and we'd go haul coal. And I'd say, Dad, is there not enough on it? And he said, no, son, round it up, round it up. And I can't help it. It's come through on my preaching. I always round it up. Amen. Try to give you a load before you leave. How do you look at me? How do you look at they're a living soul. Christ died for them. Yes, sir. Amen. You've got to realize that they're, they're a living soul. You know how they became a living soul? God formed man out of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into him the breath of life. In order for that soul to be a living soul, life only comes from God, God had to give him a part of himself. Amen. And because each one of us is a living soul, we're never going to die because a part of God can't die. He's eternal. So you're going to live somewhere for eternity. You're ever going to live in hell or you're going to live in heaven for eternity. When you start looking at those souls and you start seeing them, drop them into hell. Amen? When you start looking at that church member as your brother, Amen. And said your worst enemy, and he done you wrong. When you start looking at him with love, like Christ did from the cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Amen. How are you looking at me? Amen. Then we'll just jump over to the end. Last verse, verse twenty-one, chapter five, Second Corinthians. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God forever. Let's look at that eternal sacrifice. Amen. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Do you realize that Christ never knew me till he met me at Calvary? Amen. Do you believe he died for all our sins? Do you think we're included in that right there? Amen. Sure. Do you think he paid for your sin? No. He became sin for us who knew no sin. He didn't know us. Amen. He didn't know us because he became sin for us. Then he knew us. Amen. You say, what part of your, what part of you was on, 
It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. What part of you was crucified on the cross? My sin. Amen. That's the part of me that was cross crucified at Calvary. Would that not be true? Amen. It's an eternal sacrifice. Do you not believe that His blood was eternal? There were some that uh, said that, well, His blood just ran down the cross and into the ground. That was the end. I believe every drop was collected. I believe every drop was taken to heaven. I believe every drop was placed on the mercy seat of God. And it's just as fresh as the day it was put there. Because it's eternal blood. My Bible tells me in Acts it's God's blood. And anything of God is eternal blood. And it's still there. It's an eternal witness of our redemption. Now, he died. Do you believe he overcame our sin? Sure. When he came out of the grave... Did any part of our sin come out with it? Nope. What about any memory of it? Does our Bible tell us that if we think about sin, it's sin? Then he would have no memory of it either. He couldn't be holy and righteous. Is that right? So he left it all behind. Good. Yeah. He put it in the sea of God's yeah. forgetfulness. Amen. As far as the east yes, is sir. from west. Well, preacher, what sin sends you to hell? Rejection of the gift right. of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. If we believe our sins paid for, which I do. Amen. Hey, he don't see my sin when he looks at me. No. My sin is gone. Yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I still sin. Yes, I need to take care of it. But it's the blood of Christ that's covered me. It's the righteousness of God. Yes, this body does sin. But it's all been paid for. But if I reject the Lord Jesus Christ, am I supposed to, if I, since we're under grace, should we sin? God forbid! Don't do that! We're supposed to live righteous. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. We're supposed to live for God. Amen. We're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be ambassadors. And the reason that we can do that, uh, we are now the sons of God. Amen. In the book of John. Not when I get there. Now. Yeah. This body, this flesh is not. Amen. I have an eternal sacrifice, eternal blood, and eternal salvation. What are you looking at? May I tell you, he's done so much for me. That was such a great love. For he so loved. No love like his. Nobody's ever loved me like that. Therefore, because I see the hope of the cross, I see his love. I see his promises of reward. I see his crowns. I see the heavenly city through the holy spiritual spectacles that he's given us. Amen. Therefore, I'm going to serve him. I can't make any of you do that. You've got to grow to age. But when you become of that age, you'll become sick. Amen. Paul said when I was a child, I acted like a child. When I became a man, I put away a child. Amen. Have you ever grown up? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Are you looking at the moment? Sacrificing the rewards of eternity? Are you looking into eternity? Dear Father, we'd ask you now, Lord, to have you in a new way. God, if they got one glimpse tonight of your glory, one glimpse, Lord, of how wonderful you are, one glimpse of how much you loved us, Father, 
Lord, maybe they'd want to serve you too. Maybe they wouldn't be afraid to come to the altar and give you glory because you're worthy. Maybe, Lord, if they've been looking in their Bible, they'd know that you're here in our presence tonight. And, Lord, you're looking at the altar. You're looking at the hearts. You're wondering what they're going to do with their lives. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, you send conviction in our midst. God, you do that work that only you can do. I ask it all in Jesus Christ's holiness.